This is where we're going to figure it out the hard way. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Building the Alpha Door. I'm Dan, and this is a project to build a 1890s style racing door from John Gardner's The Dory Book. Illustrations by Sam Manning. Uh, today we're in Harold Burnham's loft and we are working on the uh, sail set for the, the boat. So, uh, yeah, with that, we'll get to it. Okay, so what we need is a triangular back sole. Okay. As opposed to a front sole. All right. Um, so what I'm going to do Basically, we're gonna go off what this is, and because we've got most of Harold's mains are gas, and yours is okay. um, not it's Marconi a three -sided per se. Yeah, it's yeah. not Marconi per se, but it is. Well, it is Marconi in some okay. sense. Yeah, um, right. I was gonna call it's it Latine. It's pre-Marconi. It's pre-Marconi. Yeah. yeah, and I was gonna call it Latine, but your your tack is in the right spot, so no. Um, so we are going to replicate our switchcraft. Sweet. Oh, what is that? A little pink stern Hampton boat? Or it would appear yeah. to be the Ariel. Does look tobacco esque, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, maybe we'll use another example um, uh -huh. in addition to the Ariel as we what this week on what would Harold do. Um, <laughs> I think this is. Oh, spritzels for this, spritzels for Dan. Oh, and this is the uh, shark here. Harold said, off and on. Uh, um, well, it seems like the only relatable clue we've been left is this mizzen. So okay. we're going for it. <clears throat> Your draft to be your max draft to be forward ish. Uh, yeah, and if this is a fairly flat setting sail, um, that's you know, that's not a bad thing at all. It's not a bad thing when when you when you ease off on the um, on the main sheet just a little bit, it mm -hmm. just the shape you know, the wind blows shape into the sail as that boom comes up it actually creates so um yeah understood so we will go yeah so you can actually kind of if it's a if it if it has the ability to set flat, then you can kind of adjust the amount of draft in the sail by the amount of tension you put on the main sheet, I guess is what I'm saying. So, um, yeah. And it, it will stretch, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, definitely. The flatter sure. we make it, the better it gets. Like building a crooked boat. If it does, in fact, twist, it will uh, hopefully twist in the right way, and 10 years later, oh, be perfect. Exactly. Okay, so <laughs> the other thing that I mentioned to Harold about this mm -hmm. is the the mast is fairly light, but the boom is an incredibly light spar because it's, the boom is six, is fifteen feet, so it, it's very light because the boat is a narrow boat, and when that boom is full out to one side, mm -hmm. you don't want it pulling the boat, you know, over with its weight. So this boom is so light that it doesn't have stiffness on its own. So when you take in on the main sheet, if there's any, uh, if there's any round to the foot of the sail, yes. basically the boom just flexes until it pulls the round out. 
Now the first sail, when I made, when I first made the sail for the previous alfadori, I had round in it, and I ended up, like the first time I sheeted in, I ended up flexing the boom down to there until the sail came taut to the mass. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I ended up having to recut the foot of the sail because I was afraid I was going to break the boom when I was flexing it so much. It would explain why Harold's made a straight foot on this. Okay, awesome. Because yeah, normally, so he, he heard everything. Normally if anything. it's a heavy spar, it will bow in the middle and you don't want the sail to take that strain. Yeah. And so if it, it's going to be a very light sail and it's a very light spar, so you don't really want any bowing is going to be done by the force of the wind exclusively. Yeah, the right. sail and the boom and the spar will not, in theory, not really will not work against each other in any capacity. So yeah, basically yeah. that the spar is so light it relies on the tension of the sail to keep it from breaking itself. You know, the uh, the, the the tension of the sail from the mast down to it. Sure. All right. So All right. we are in a cool. spot now where. Um, <clears throat> See what Harold, it's interesting, what Harold does is, um, three, five, seven, put them here. I'll do every other one. Mm -hmm. Every other, every few seams are broad seamed. Oh, uh, okay. So that's what he, he's putting the shape in every other seam. In every other seam, but on the mizzen, there's broad <clears throat> seams added to all of them. With that being said, there's only four panels there. So yeah. perhaps because you're going to have... We'll have a lot more than that, so maybe we could do the every do other every thing. other, and that yeah. way you don't just... We're going to eat up all the material if we, mm. if we broad seam everywhere. So it begs the question... I think... Yeah, okay. We'll do it every other, up and up the luff and the... Uh, you know, because again, if you take and a half inch everywhere okay. you're gonna one two three four five six seven eight you'll lose two inches which isn't four inches um which isn't substantial but um because we're, we're adding extra material but we can always cut it open and well no this should be fine <laughs> Right. Sometimes it just gets stuck in your own head. So, um, maybe we lay out some panels. All right. Get you some vulnerable material here. All right. That's the foot over there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But that's the foot, and all the all the, the rolls that are on this side. I feel like Mickey Mouse. You ever see Fantasia? Uh, it's hard to see it. I feel like I need a wizard hat with, it, with the ears. Uh, and I can uh, just do this. And it will just roll itself out exactly. Maybe. I don't know if it would be a copyright infringement for Susanna to play. <laughs> I 
I used all the sharp ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, plus, it would be a scratch if you hit one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what's going on on the leech. And we're going to have three inches overlap. Or three inch inch edges. So overlap. Um, yeah, keep this whole thing as light as you can. It doesn't have to be a centennial sale. Oh no, it's the material. Will so that's just a, yeah. The other thing I was saying to uh, Harold was, I think I'd like to go with the lightest grommets for all of, for the ruff and the foot, except for, you know, like say the, the tack of the sail and the head of the sail and the outfall. The reference um, rings, will those be an appropriate size for the corners? It's kind of the standard. The item. what rings? The big, the ones that you were marking on. No, no, no. <laughs> Too big for the corners, perhaps? Yeah. Okay. We'll find, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do rolled ones then, that's fine. So, so the lightest ones for everything except for the next gauge up for the, for, for the corners. Maybe we can do number six drawings for the corners, something where they're like, it's good, yeah. but it doesn't get anything. Okay. Like we won't... We won't use the bottle jack or the um, sweet the yeah, yeah. Press for this sale. Well, you you remember the ones that we used in some time? The like the lightest gauge we used for the uh, reef points, and I'm thinking go with those for everything except for the corners on this side. Understood. So, um, normally we would have string to um, measure seam allowance. Technically we do. Um. All going that way. Um. Okay, we're gonna do it a little different. For seam allowance, I'm gonna make tick marks. Just use a ruler or a um, square. Mm -hmm. Just batten the one there. Mm -hmm. What about something with numbers written on it? There's this drafting ruler. We'll need that, but not for this. Okay. Maybe your maybe your uh, drafting ruler is the weapon of choice. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's, a, it's okay. There's that other one on the side too, on the left hand side. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I don't. They both look like they got issues. But. Truly, <laughs> but with their powers combined, they make one good drafting ruler. I'm sure all the important parts of each are here. Oh, look, there's the glue. Oh, oh that's...
that's smart. Oh. That looks really smart. Things are organized, I will say, in here. Dan. They are still Dan, you're in luck. You're right. Did, you, did you see the little grommets that I picked up off the floor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Dan, there are... And then, then there's more in one of those buckets. Oh, my God. We can do it. We can do this. Swear. Great. <laughs> So long as I don't melt the hole through the sail while I'm putting the grommets. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't worry about that. You're only the biggest problem yeah. is that I bought the last box of these in existence. Ooh, and they're still going on. The last time I ordered those, the lady was like, we only have two left and they're not making them anymore. And I was like, there's a, there's a pre-filled bottom. Oh, pre so you don't have to bottom. spin... That machine is too old to have a bottom spinner. Am I we right, can, John? We can give it. Uh, we can give it one. It could have one. Okay, it, it just doesn't have currently one, have one. Yeah, there's a belt, yeah. so we can have one because we can. But the so the point is those just in. you just throw them in and then they have a um, little plastic spool that they're preloaded on that you just get thrown away. All right. Well, it's a little easier for up here at, at his work. They just they as they sew the bobbins are spools a new bobbin for them. Okay. As just as the machine turns. Yeah. So it's really nice. But. Okay. So what you do not have. <laughs> you may. This is a ruler Nailed now. It. I got straighter ones in the firebox if you want. <laughs> oh. Okay, let's begin. Your broad mm -hmm. seams, of which there are one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, yeah, we're gonna lose an inch and a half of your sail on each side. So to save that six inches, is what will be your finished amount. Eight. Eight is what we're just gonna go. Eight. I was a little concerned, but we have. Fail saves. Keep you from the fail saves to keep you from uh, running out of material. Is that piece of plywood there briefly enough to keep you from going down through it? <laughs> yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it will. I wouldn't jump on it, but it will. Safety first. Mm -hmm. Alright. Let's see how it is around here. You guys are doing everything by the book. <laughs> <laughs> it just depends which book you're reading. Mm. Um, 
inches just like that here. So we'll just go big on this one. Yeah, that stove is putting out some heat. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a really awesome one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I uh, I gave George a hand hauling his float this uh, this good. fall. Is he gonna give you a slip? <laughs> yeah, are you are you moving in? Uh, not that I know. Of. Like I I haven't I haven't said anything from him about it. Like you know, I just I mean he let me keep the boat over there for two weeks this past summer. So, That's awesome. You know, yeah. Yeah. He likes oh. your boat. He just yeah. sent us a holiday card with a poem he wrote. And it's a picture of him and his wife and his daughter in that, you know, the sunken dory that was full of algae and, like, nasty. Mm -hmm. The three of them are sitting in it in, like, full fowlies and wellies. It's, oh, my it's, gosh. It's absolutely that sounds good. awesome. It's adorable. It's so wow. cute. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that takes some commitment, huh? Mm hmm It was adorable. Yeah, no, it's, uh, but... It's quite an operation. Haul mm -hmm. that's a, there's a lot of floats there too. Yeah. <laughs> Where does like, put them all? You know, um, they're all stacked over at um, the parking lot uh, oh, they are. for uh, yeah for, for the other Rocky guys. Neck accommodations for the private um, arena. Yeah, at the oh, ramp. Oh, okay. At yeah. the ramp right there. Yeah. There's no one parks there in the winter. Right. The game is a fuck. Sailmaker's moccasins. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can walk on the fabric and not make it too tight. Yeah. Yeah, they look warm too. Mm -hmm. They uh they get the job done. <laughs> Wow. 
Bell's theme song. <laughs> no, this is Moonglow. Oh. It sounds like the X-Files. The truth is out there. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta have you by the shop one of these days to check out the uh, progress. I love that. <clears throat> I've got all but the uh, shear strokes on now. So. I've actually got the shear strokes cut out, but they're not, you know, they're not on the boat yet. Video. Oh really? As, as, as a proof. No. Uh, basically to figure out when to start coming over here. <laughs> Smart John would yeah. have started in the summer. Okay. But busy John. Yeah, I hear you. Starting. Yeah, you 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 got plenty of time. In the cold. <clears throat> to do Tom's with the deal world, so. But that was more of a one-off. I was here anyway for something or other. That was a quick and dirty, too, because you cut it out of the deal sale. Yes. Look at this. Look at this. This is And this is Oceana sailcloth. Sure is. Mm, it's nothing but the best. Built, <clears throat> yeah, like they built them stuff. and they used to build them all the time. Yeah, that's a tight weave too, huh? Mm -hmm. Alright, well, thanks for stopping by building the Alpha Dory. A uh, massive thank you to everybody who has commented, subscribed, liked, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next video. Have a great day.